U.S. City volunteers hand out cash cards and school supplies to Sandy survivors in Coney Island. As we enter the era of 4G mobile phones, we look back to the history of this telecommunication technology. Welcome to our headlines. I'm Wendy Chen. Thank you for joining us. First up in the United States, it has been 10 months since Hurricane Cindy struck the East Coast. Bad cities love and care for the survivors have not ceased despite the passing of time. New York City volunteers continue to show their support as they return to Coney Island to hold a back to school distribution in which they handed out 300 US dollars worth of cash cards to 66 households and 142 backpacks filled with school supplies to children. In the United States, 10 months after Hurricane Sandy, New York City volunteers returned to Brooklyn's Coney Island to hand out cash cards to parents and backpacks to children, helping them start the new school year off on the right foot. These illegal immigrant families from Mexico, on average, have about four children. We saw today that one family had seven children. Today there were about 200 children here to receive our backpack and the school supplies. More than 30 to 40 percent of the people that live in Coney Island are under the poverty line. Uh, school is very important. Uh, during the, the school year, it's very expensive to the people to get the, the supplies. So we know that we had to do programs and drives in order to help them with the school supplies. Children ages 2 to 18 receive a blue backpack filled with various school supplies and a surprise toy. City's loving kindness is found in every backpack. Was it worth the wait for you guys? Yeah, it was worth it. Got a new animal. Thank you for getting us the school supplies. Now we can go back to school. Sushi that's given everybody else a chance to actually not feel good about themselves. Well, how much are all of us? We're a lot. And you know how each grade they ask for a lot and a lot. And we're just struggling to get the stuff. Tome mis precauciones. Yo tengo seis I have six children, and when Hurricane Sandy arrived, I took them to a place far away from it. I never thought that such a horrible thing would happen. When I returned home, I saw that everything was gone. I was very sad. But now that I think about it, we were very lucky to escape unharmed. We will continue to get better. Tsuji has helped us a lot, and I am very thankful. Thank you. Because of Hurricane Sandy, Tsuji has given us much assistance and I'm very grateful. Thank goodness Tsuji is here to help. The happy children go home with brand new backpacks ready to welcome the school year, while their parents' burden are eased thanks to Tsuji's love. Moving to China in Fujian province, city volunteers have been holding regular humanitarian seminars for medical staff at the Fujian Hospital. The most recent seminar was held to inspire newly recruited medical personnel to serve their patients with love and care. <laughs> This is the scene at the humanitarian seminar held by Tsuji and Fujing Hospital in Fujian Province. The purpose of today's event is to introduce Tsuji's humanistic values to newly recruited medical staff. I think the seminar held by Tsuji has encouraged all of us to incorporate Tsuji's humanistic spirits in our workforce. The volunteers have also motivated us to serve our patients with love and care. Tsuji's humanitarian spirit has inspired doctors and nurses at the Fujing Hospital to serve patients with attentiveness, as curing the mind is as important as curing the body. We need to fulfill our own duties and serve our patients. This place is our cultivation ground. How big is this cultivation ground? It is as big as our compassionate hearts. I think both doctors and Suji volunteers can cure sickness. Our doctors can cure the body, and Suji volunteers can treat the mind. Through a skit, volunteers explain the meaning behind Suji's bamboo coin banks and encourage those in the audience to donate their love. After today's seminar, our new staff will be able to spread the seeds of love far and wide. Prior to the seminar, Tsuji volunteers and a group of medical personnel visited care recipients in remote areas. Seeing the suffering, doctors and nurses are inspired to change for the better.
I have learned to be grateful and content. It is better to give than to receive, and at the end of the day, we are the ones that benefit the most from our actions. The humanitarian seminar has inspired me to spread my love far and wide. I will definitely bring this passion back to my workforce. At the end of the seminar, doctors and nurses are vowed to incorporate Sidi's humanistic spirit not only in their workforce but also in their daily lives. Smartphones have become the new standard in the mobile phone market. However, mobile technology goes as far back as 40 years when the world's first cell phone, the Dynatech, changed the world. Nicknamed the brick, the handset had limited functions and could only make calls. Today, as Taiwan stands at the doorway of the 4G era, let's take a look at the development of Taiwan's telecommunication industry. It's more than just a telephone, it's also a camera. It's also a PC with internet access and multimedia functions. With a wide range of models to choose from, it is a brand war to see who can produce the world's most popular device. Looking back in time, in 1973, Motorola engineer Martin Cooper invented the world's first mobile phone. It was nicknamed the brick given its clunky appearance. Oh, I don't care where. Back then, businessmen relied on this brick to conduct their business. Although its appearance was less than striking, the handset cost a hefty 4,000 US dollars at the time, and only those with status or wealth could afford one. Now, telecom carriers are in a battle of wheat to get more subscribers, but back then, when only a 1G network was available, consumers lined up in droves to subscribe. The brick was 22 centimeters in length and weighed about a kilogram. Though the phone boasted a tough appearance, it was extremely unwieldy and limited in its functions. Slowly, however, the cell phone saw one makeover after the next. They became slimmer, featured a black exterior and an external antenna. Although they might have appeared unstylish by modern standards, however, this marked a turning point for mobile technology. 1G wireless networks use analog voice-only cellular phone standards. The 2G network made available SMS messaging as a form of data transmission. In 1991, the GSM standard was developed as a replacement for first-generation analog cellular networks. However, even analog to digital 2G was not enough and was superseded by a newer 2.5G standard. And the arrival of 3G technology brought about revolutionary changes in communications. The biggest difference with 3G is that it's designed for multimedia communication and it features a wider range of services, including access to the Internet. Now with a touch, communication is right at your fingertips. Smartphones have outperformed traditional cell phones, forcing a collapse of the traditional cell phone market. Yet there are still those devotees who still hang on to their older models. Ramen. As seen in the commercial, when this model was launched, it became a popular choice for consumers. This was followed by a second generation of cell phones such as the Nokia 8800, which is now deemed a classic by collectors, showing that traditional cell phones still hold value in the hearts of certain consumers. I once had a customer whose phone was rather old. He was adamant to get it fixed. For him, it wasn't about the monetary value of the phone, but rather its sentimental value since it was given to him by his family. With mobile technology taking great strides, Taiwan's 4G licensing plans still lag behind other countries. Whether that will be a problem remains to be seen. But there's no denying that the cell phone will continue to feature prominently in our future. Following the recent political unrest in Zambonga of the Philippines, city volunteers once again mobilized themselves to gather 1,500 aid packs, which they hope, with the help of the military, will be delivered into the hands of the needy. In fact, city's work here in Zambonga dates back to 1998, when a free clinic was held for those requiring medical attention. 
city volunteers never shy away from giving love to victims of political unrest. In the eyes of the volunteers, Zambonga, the province with the highest crime rate in the Philippines, is a place that needs their love and warmth. In 1998, Philippines Tima Medical Staff traveled from Manila to Zambonga to hold a three-day free clinic for 6,000 patients, during which they carried out 270 surgeries. The director of the Filipino Chinese Chambers of Commerce asked his son-in-law Yang Weishun to assist to Ji, thus leading to his later affinity with the Buddhist NGO. Uh, they went there twice, so when we brought the idea of uh, Tsuchi coming back to Sambuanga for the third time, um, then uh, Tsuchi President, Philippines President, Ms. Ms. Uh, Linda Chua said, actually we don't go to a place more than once. We went to your place three times, uh, two, twice already. So isn't it about time for you to help yourself? Why don't you set up a Tsuchi office there and continue what we have done? has been devoted to Tsuchi's work. The 13 local residents who joined him in organizing the free clinics began visiting remote areas with medical supplies. In the year of 2000, the Tsuchi Zambonga Liaison Office was established and volunteers set up subsidies to help cerebral edema and cataract patients, as well as organizing a prosthesis seminar to help the handicapped. In 2004, the Tsuji Great Love Prosthesis Center opened and in 2008, an ophthalmology center was established. The 13 persons team had grown to 90 Tsuji and local volunteers, as well as some 200 TIMA members. From 1998 to 2012, a total of 63 clinics were held and thousands of shifts of volunteers and medical staff were mobilized to help over 25,000 patients. Wounded soldiers who fought against each other in wars later met in Tsuji, only this time to receive prosthesis legs. Though political unrest continued in Zimbonga, city volunteers were always there ready to reach out with a helping hand, regardless of race or ethnicity. <laughs> Travelling back in time, city volunteers crossed war zones to deliver hot meals to innocent residents. The recent political unrest in September, volunteers were once again mobilized to gather relief items in a safe location and, with the help of the military, hope to hand out 1,500 aid packs to those affected by the fighting. In recognition of Tsuji's work in the area, the government of Zambonga set August 26 as Tsuji Day. Over the past 15 years, the countless numbers of residents helped by Tsuji is a testimony to the truth that great love does in fact transcend all boundaries. With the vision of curing sickness, healing people, healing hearts, team members all over the world reach out to the poor and sick, regardless of their religious, ethnic or national backgrounds. In our continuing series of reports on the 15th anniversary of Tima in the Philippines, we take a look at how volunteers offer patients post-surgery care and CG signature warmth and love. in sunlight, patients in this recovery room all wear a smile. This 50-year-old patient suffered from thyroid tumors for 15 years. Thanks to Tsuji's free clinic, she finally had the chance to get treatment. Now I am very happy because I've had this free surgery. I feel that the burden in my body has been lightened and I am so relieved because of it. <laughs> in this part of the country, especially, this is the poorest area of the Philippines. There's a lot of people that cannot even afford to eat. How much more to spend um, thousands just to get to Zamboanga to find us. So we go out and look for it. 
um, pastor said uh, it's not comfortable. It's go help them where help is needed. Later, team our members and city volunteers help patients check on their wounds as part of their post-surgery care. Checking on my patients. After surgery, we need to check on their condition. Before they go home, we will tell them how to tend to their wounds, what medication they have to take, and when to come back to see a doctor. We make sure they are fine from beginning to end. At the free clinics in the Philippines, volunteers help patients wash their face and brush their hair before sending them home. Thank you so for the services for our work. Thank you for everything you have done for us. This is so special, especially having you wash our face and comb our hair. Thank you, thank you very much. We love you. Thank you very much. We love you. This is what the free clinic is all about. Look how happy they are. It makes me so relieved to see that. As TIMA members and city volunteers reach out to the poor and sick, they not only free them from suffering, but also work to heal their hearts by tending to their emotional needs. Thank you, bye bye. This year marks the 15th anniversary of TIMA. Prior to its establishment, Dr. Ke Xianzhi had already joined Siji's free clinic on a regular basis. Because on Master Zheng Yan, I have done this for 18 years. Volunteer Yang Wei Shun started taking part in free clinics right after the establishment of Tima. As long as I'm still breathing, I can still walk, I am still useful, <laughs> I'll be, we will all be doing this. A meeting with Master Zheng Yan motivated volunteers from the Philippines to shoulder the responsibility of Tsuji's medical mission. <laughs> You're right, it's very difficult and uh, it takes a lot of money, a lot of hard work. It's a uh, heavy responsibility, but uh, uh, Master said we should be, be willing to do and be happy to bear. And we're just lucky that we have kind doctors who are, are willing to do and happy to bear, and even volunteers who are willing to work very hard to, to change the lives of these people. If we hold on together, I know our dreams will never I've been with Chuti for 18 years. 18 years? 13. 13. 13 years? 10 years. 7 years. 7 or 8 years. Continuing with our series of reports on the offshore island of Lan Yu, otherwise known as the Pearl of the East, which has long been celebrated for its pristine natural environment and the abundant wildlife that inhabits here, the island of Lan Yu has countless crisscross small creeks that serve as the gathering points for the island's wild and plant life. However, as part of the government's reconstruction plans after Typhoon Tenbin, many of these previously untouched creeks are now being dredged and fitted with cement dikes to prevent flooding in the face of future typhoons, yet the work are considered by many residents as overly invasive and destructive to both the land and the animals and vegetation that live nearby. As of today, nowhere in the mountains will you find illegal development or deforestation as a result of these projects. Uh, 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 
What was once a wild creek has been widened and boxed in by concrete dikes, turning it into basically a drainage channel. Work like this has been happening over Langyu for the past six months to a year. They are not restoring the waterways so much as destroying them. That small creek, why do they have to widen it so much, ruin it, it all over again? The cementation of the creeks and rivers is an extremely destructive act and does massive damage to the wildlife and plant life that depend on the waterways. Also remember, tourists come to Lanyu to see the natural habitat. With the cementation of these streams and creeks, the shrimp and coconut crabs that formerly inhabited such creeks have disappeared. Another native to Langyu is the green sea turtle, which like clockwork will visit the beaches of Ba Dai Bay every summer to lay its eggs. The light pollution there is really serious, but we have seen that every four years there occurs a peak in the numbers of turtles coming ashore to lay eggs. However, mud collected from the dredging of creeks has been deposited on the coastline where it is having a negative impact on beaches and the green sea turtles. The stream 2 to 3 kilometers length used to have vegetation growing up and down both sides. So what happened to the natural makeup of the river? The dredging of the waterways, all of it is planned and carried out in accordance with ecological engineering methods. In 2012, the central government gave the Taidong government approximately 2.3 million US dollars to carry out five water and soil conservation and restoration projects. And the Council of Agriculture, Soil and Water Conservation Bureau was budgeted 6 million US dollars to carry out nine water and soil restoration and dredging projects in Langyu streams and creeks. For the residents of Langyu, it sometimes feels like their island is being inundated in concrete. Where there is damage, we build there. After building, the question is then how to introduce more traditional and ecological engineering methods that everywhere can accept. Many of the projects being carried out are in uninhabited areas where no lives are at risk. Residents wonder is the government just spending money to show that it is doing something. When the volume of water in the creeks gets high, only then do they become actual rivers. So the question is, do we really need to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on dredging these creeks? I don't think so. On the heels of Langyu's tourism boom has come an uptick in the tourism-related construction. Either for some, this is a positive sign for the local economy. However, such progress also brings new pressures to bear on the environment. Now, with the dredging of creeks and the altering of the natural waterways that countless wildlife depend on, in the future will Langyu still merit the name Pearl of the East? Back to the Philippines at the end of the show, as many needy families in Navota city of Metro Manila work odd jobs to make ends meet, having three meals a day is a blessing many dare not ask for, let alone visiting the doctors when they are ill. To help city volunteers and team of medical staff help the 169th free clinic to alleviate their suffering, we'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.